And where, so where was your first apartment? Where did you live when you were first married? In Brooklyn? In Brooklyn we lived. That's where, that's where you were born, I think. I was born in Brooklyn. I was the last one born in Brooklyn. born in Brooklyn, right. And then when I was six months old, you moved to Valley Stream. We moved to Valley Stream, yes. The, at the end of 1953, it's coming into 54. You must have moved in the wintertime. I don't remember, really. Because you always told me when I was six months old, you moved to Valley Street. Okay. And that's where, no, um, Lucien was born. Lucien was born. She was born in Valley Street. In 1958. 58, right. Five right. years after you. Right. Yes. So, um... And then we moved out of there. In 1963. Right. And moved here. Moved in Comac, right. So, um... Because Daddy got a job. He got a job. You know, he was working. Where was he working? He was working at Nassau Community College. Nassau Community College. In business. And then he got... In business. And then he got transferred or something. Oh, no, he got... Tra no, he was working with my brothers. Initially. He was working with my brothers in the Mother of Pearl company. Right. And then after about five years, they gave him some money, and he left, and he went back to school. Mm -hmm. And um, then, um, then after that, he went back to school. Was he at Nassau then? Well, he went back to school, and then he was working for Mutual of New York, the insurance company, for a while. I remember that. He worked for an insurance company in Valley Street, selling insurance. And he was doing people's taxes in Brooklyn. He was a CPA. He had accounting background. So he was, he, every once in a while he'd be going in and doing people's taxes in Brooklyn. And I remember he wouldn't get paid in money. He'd sometimes come back with eggs and all sorts of stuff when he was doing people's taxes in Brooklyn. I remember that in Valley Stream. And then he started teaching at Nassau Community College, which was a small community college at the time. Yeah. Then he heard about an opening in Suffolk Community College, yeah. and he started working there, but he was driving out from yeah. Valley Stream. Valley Stream, so right. we decided to move at that Yeah, time. and that's when we moved in 1963. And we went to have this house for $17,000. Actually, I think the number was $33,000. That's the number I remember. Yeah. 31. 31? 31,000. Okay, 31,000. Yeah, I don't know, the 17, I think 17,000 was the house my father bought. Really? In Brooklyn. Yeah. That's what I think of it. Yeah, this was, this house was $31,000. No question about that. Yeah, in 1963. Yeah. Well, it's probably worth a little more now. <laughs> That's good. And, um... God knows how much more. Well, yeah. So, um, so, well, it's an, it's an interesting story with the girls, especially your sisters, um, you know, going to school. It's oh, so, yeah. so different. That was very unusual yep. in those days. Yeah. Very unusual, coming from an Italian family. Yeah. So your father was really influenced by, by the Jewish people around him. Absolutely. And of course, we still think that he came from a royal family. We haven't been able to prove it. Well, because there's no birth records and, yeah. and that, you know, he may, right. he may have been illegitimate or but who knows yeah, what he was. I think he was, yes. Yeah. I really think he was. Um, that's the story we got that he... He was an illegitimate from some kind of, from a duke or somebody. Or right. Like. Chris tried to find out. He was into it quite deeply. Yeah. I don't know if he ever came up with anything. But um, that's what we think, you know. But right. I don't announce it too much. Well, record keeping being what it was, I mean, it's not particularly easy. We know he was adopted. Right. And that wasn't, that was the name he was given, Bellini. Right. I don't know where they got it from, but. Right, but that was probably the adoptive family name. Yes, and he used to, that was another thing. He, whoever adopted him was into music, and they would take him in his cradle to, to behind, the, behind the orchestra that, the, that his father, who had an adopted father, mm -hmm. was conducting. He would bring this, uh, my father in the cradle behind the... Um, curtains of wherever he, he was conducting. And you think the guy was a conductor? Yes, his father. How do you know that? Because they used to take my father your with them. But you remember your father telling you telling me that, that his father his father would take him was a conductor. Was a conductor and would take him in his cradle 
to sit behind the curtain of the theater where he was at. Right. And that's where he had, that's where we think he got the instinct of all the music that he had. My father was into music quite deeply. And he, he grew up in what? So he grew up in what? He grew up in Piedmont. He grew up in he, Piedmont. He was born. And born in Piedmont. But he was adopted in what city? Where he was? I don't know where he was adopted, but he must have grown up because he didn't come to Naples until he was twenty-one. Right, so he must have grown up in the north. Yes, he grew up in the north, which maybe influenced him intellectually, because mm -hmm. uh, you know they call him the high, the high Italians. Right. That's how they refer to the northerners. Right. They call them the high Italians. Right. And so that we know that, hmm. you know, that he was born in Piedmont. That much we know. Right. Why he came down to Naples, I, I'm not sure. But that's where he met my mother, right? Because she came from, a, you might say, a very famous family. Her brother designed one of the famous altars in one of the churches in Naples. He's known for having designed this humongous, beautiful uh, altar. He was an architect. He was an. He was. I. I don't know whether he was an architect or a sculptor, mm -hmm. but he, he designed it, mm -hmm. that much we know. Interesting. My brother was the architect. Right, right. What was, um, what was it like getting to meet Daddy's family back in the day when you were first introduced? Do you well, remember when you first very, met him? It was very strange. First of all, his father had died right. when he was 12 years old. Right. And he had been working since he was 8 years old with 11 brothers and sisters, eight of whom were girls. Right. And they all went to work, and some of them never went to high school, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, the mother was, mother was very difficult, very difficult personality. She didn't like me at first, mm. because I was too small, mm. you know, too short. All the girls were 5'8 and more, mm -hmm. but because I was small, you know, I didn't fit their model, <laughs> so to speak. But thank God my husband didn't care well, that was nice and of stood them. up for it. He stood up against her. Mm -hmm. She was very difficult. Mm -hmm. But then came the day where she apologized to me. Really? For having mistreated me one day after we were married, and she had come to my house. I think we were celebrating uh, Danielle's birthday. And at that time, she apologized to me. Well, that was nice of her. But she, was a, she wasn't very nice. No, I remember her. She was pretty scary. That's what I remember. I remember your mother as being really very nice and do very, docile. Very and, sweet. Very yeah, sweet. very sweet. Yeah, that was a big very contrast. Sweet, very yeah, gentle. we called we called his mother Big Grandma. Yeah, basically. <laughs> and yours little. Basically, that's the fact. Yes. That was interesting. My well, sister Anna, yeah. and yeah, knew how to stand up to her. To your mother, to his mother. To his mother. How so? How did she do that? She that was her personality, and, I, and my and my mother-in-law liked her very much. Wanted her son Chris to marry my daughter. Your my sister. Daughter, my sister Anna. Really? But it didn't work out. Well, probably but for she liked her because because I was very humble and very quiet. My sister Anna, she stood up to anybody. Really? What would and she do? Her, what would she do? That was her personality. What would she do? Well, she would just tell you off. Really? In in her own way, whether it was verbally or physically. Uh, you physically, know? that well, what, you know, well, oh, attitude. You just know. give you a personal physical attitude. Yeah, yeah. I see. So, in other words, don't talk down to me, whoever the heck you think you are. Really? Yeah. So that's why she, that's why my mother-in-law liked her. Mm -hmm. Does uh, do, do any of the three boys, her three boys, remind you of her more than the other two? The, just uh, personality-wise, Peter Chris. Remind me of Anna. Of Anna, Peter Chris or Greg. They're all the same, no. Yeah. They're all very sweet, no. 
she, she was home with them, you know, till they all grew up before she went back to school to teach. Yeah. She didn't go back to school to teach. She stayed with them at home. Yeah. Do you remember talking to her about that, about why she did that? Or? No, no, I didn't. Yeah. That was her choice. Right. And, um, you know, it was what was given to you. In other words, if I was, I was offered a job, I took the job, you know, mm -hmm. because actually we really needed it right. at the time. Now remember, some, we, either one of us was earning $7,000 a year. I don't remember who was me or daddy. Either one of us. Right. But that's what it was. Yeah. Right. I, I, now, you, you guys are pretty close. I mean, you, I remember Uncle Frank teaching you how to drive. Yes. I must have been four year, or five years old. But then, you owned a Studebaker. You owned a big gray Studebaker. I don't remember. It was a tank. And that is the car you learned to drive on. I don't remember. And I remember Daddy wouldn't teach you how to drive. But Uncle Frank taught you how to drive, and I'm fairly certain this car had a clutch. <laughs> um, and I remember looking out uh, of the front, of the front door of the house on Midwood Street, watching you practice driving. And you'd pull up to the front, and you'd go around the block, and you'd pull up to the front, and you'd go around the block. And Uncle Frank was the one who taught you how to drive. Yeah, I guess, I, yeah. yeah. I remember that, yeah. Yeah, because you had to learn how to drive to get to school. That's right. Can you believe it? Yeah. That was when, when did I teach? Well, you, you, you went back to school when I was about two and a half or three, so about 1956? Yes. Yes, I was, I was in the, yes. I remember 1958, I think I remember. Well, 1958, Lucianne was born. So maybe you went back after Lucienne was born. I seem to remember you going back. I think I went back after Lucienne. Before was born. she was born. Before, before she, she was born. born. Because yeah, I, and I took a leave of absence. Yeah, I remember that. And I and I left Lucienne with Angie across the street. Well, you left me and Danielle with Angie to go have yeah. the baby, to go have Lucienne. Oh yeah, that was it. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, Danielle and I went over to Aunt Angie's. You went to Mercy Hospital in Rockville Center. And had Lucienne. We remember that. And um, yeah, yeah. But you were teaching when I was about two and a half or three years old. You went back. Yeah, and I had a babysitter. Right. Come to that. Mrs. Funk. Yeah, thirty-five dollars a week. I yeah, think. Mrs. Funk. And then when Lucienne was born, we had Mrs. Will. Oh God. Yeah. You have a phenomenal memory. Well, Lucienne was very fond of Mrs. Will. Mrs. Will was not very fond of me, however. I remember that. <laughs> So anyway, well, okay, well, well, thanks for the memories. This was good. It was, it was fun to go, go visit back in the old days and have the history for the family. So, you know, we love you a lot, and we really appreciate all the time you spent with all of us. Well, I had a good life, I have to say. I had a good life. Yeah. Think of all and you've my done. My parents and my, and my brothers, you know, they were all very good to us. Yeah. And then you went on, you had us, and, you know, and we're your great legacy. I so. Yeah. I'm so proud of all of you. Well. Wow. You know, and my grandchildren, they couldn't be nicer. And they're smart, but they're good kids, you know. Not only smart and work hard, but they're good character, nice characters. Yeah. Well, you've done a good job, Grandma. Congratulations. Thank you. All right. Love you a lot. Bye. Love you too.